Okay, so how long should an adventure be? Is there a right answer? Probably not. But is it a good question? I think it is. And if you don't wanna wade through this entire video, because why would you? My point is only that this kind of adventure, a short one, is better for us than big hardcovers like this. There's a place for big epic adventures like this, but it should not be the default. And making it the default, I submit, is bad. It makes all of our lives harder. That's basically it. On with the show. Hey everybody, Matt Colby here. This might actually be a short video. We'll see. I wanted to talk about campaigns and campaign settings and this, this sort of missing piece from the game, the idea that you make or choose a world to play in. That used to be a big deal. Nowadays, not so much. But as I was working on that script, I realized that before I talked about that, I needed to talk about what an adventure is and more to the point, what it should be. Because the entire idea of a campaign only makes sense if you make some assumptions about what an adventure is. The whole reason we use the term campaign is because of this assumption that you are going to string together a bunch of otherwise unrelated smaller adventures into one big story. Now, some of you watching this are already saying to yourself, well, of course, how else would a campaign work? Well, I went through this whole thing live on Twitch and we had folks in chat saying, I literally don't understand how you can do that. So this is obviously a problem. It may not be a problem for you, but it is very clearly a real issue. I say string together otherwise unrelated adventures. Well, the thing that relates them all together is the heroes. Your players are the heroes of all of these stories. So this becomes the story of all those stories. And that's why we use the term campaign. You don't try to shoehorn them all into some larger narrative. No, no, no. You let each adventure be its own story with a beginning, a middle, and an end rewards and all that. Then you give the players some downtime, ask them what they want to do before the next adventure, and you repeat the cycle. It's why old people like me call adventures modules, because they were modular. One does not lead to the other. There is no relationship between this adventure and this one. You can arrange them in whatever order you like. They are modular. There tends to be an order between any two modules just because they're for different levels. Oh, this is a third level adventure. This is a fourth level adventure. So this one happens first. Okay, but says who? A lot of adventures say they're for fourth level or whatever, but you can run them for third or fifth, often without even changing anything. These ratings on here are not a precise science. I mean, I think almost any adventure you buy, you've got to tweak. The folks who made these adventures had no idea what your players are like. Are they all very tactical players or the complete opposite? Well, guess what? That has a big impact on the difficulty of the adventure. Also, a lot of official or, or even just really popular adventures get almost no playtesting. So you gotta do some work to tweak it anyway. Don't get too hung up on what level it says it's for is the point I'm making. We call this a campaign because of basically the Napoleonic Wars, which was sort of the most popular kind of war game for decades back in the early 20th century. It just means this collection of battles. That's the analogy. We sieged this castle once, then we went and fought the Spanish army once. Those were different unrelated objectives, but the soldiers, these soldiers fought in all of them. So that's a campaign. That's why we use the term campaign. And it's why our world is often called a campaign setting. It's just the place where all these adventures happen. I keep saying all these adventures, a series of adventures. And we have now arrived at the point of the video. I think most people, and that means there's still a lot of exceptions. Yes, you're probably one of them. You're so special. But I think most people think of something like this when they think of the typical D&D adventure. Now, I suspected this was true, but I wasn't sure. I suspected it was true because this is basically the default form factor for an official adventure. So since it's what people make, this is what people tend to buy. And then they assume this is the normal way to run D&D. Some of these hardcovers are anthologies and have several adventures in them. Okay, but since this is the most popular kind of adventure, folks assume that this is what a normal D&D adventure looks like. I posted a poll online, over 4,000 people voted and over 70% of them said, yes, the big hardcover adventure best describes their experience. Whew. Listen, I rarely say this is bad. I prefer to say, here's why people do this. And when it goes wrong, here's how and why but I feel very strongly about this, so I'm just gonna say it. This, the giant hardcover adventure that takes you from levels one to 10 or whatever, this should not be the default experience of play in D&D &D 
or really any RPG, they make these adventures because they make way more money from a hardcover than they do from something like this. But the fact that they make more money off of these should not mean that we therefore should view this as the default. We, I think as dungeon masters, are much better served with these short 32 to 64 page adventures. In fact, you may already know this, but remember the OGL debacle from last year? Well, this is why the OGL was originally created. Well, it, it's one of the reasons. It's the reason the board of directors went for the idea. The OGL let smaller companies make many small adventures for D&D, so Wizards of the Coast didn't have to. Small adventures like this are cheap, and you need a wide selection of them. So no single adventure sells that well. So you can see where this is going, right? So how about instead of lots of small adventures that lose money, we make one big adventure every year? Okay, sure. That makes sense for those folks, the folks who own the game. But does it make sense for us, the actual people running the game? I say the nay. I think smaller adventures are better for us and healthier, if that makes any sense. And I think we would all be a lot happier as players, as directors, if this was normal and this was the exception. Oh, small adventure, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Actually, all the ways boil down to one way, and that is, they are short. But it turns out that has a big impact on play. For instance, you can read this whole thing in an afternoon, right? Which means you can buy it this afternoon, read it, and run it tonight. How many new DMs end up frustrated reading this and getting lost trying to run it, and they decide the hobby isn't for them? I don't know, but I bet it's at least some... I bet a lot of new DMs, they get excited because of the promise of this epic story. They don't see a lot of other options, just different big hardcover adventures, and they think, I must read this whole thing before I start running. I mean, some of these big adventures explicitly tell the dungeon master they have to read the entire thing before they get started. I can't, this is bad. DMs should not start with these massive adventures. Even Fandelver's like 64 pages. That is huge to me. For a starter adventure, you, your first adventure ever? That is massive. You know what I think makes a good first adventure? I think the Delian Tomb is a good first adventure. It took me like an hour to make this thing. I think that's one reason it's so popular. We know that hundreds of thousands of people have used some variation of the Delian Tomb. Yeah, well, I can see why. All these other choices are massive. These big adventures have their place. I love some of them. They've been around since at least the 80s when they wrapped all of the G, D, and Q series together. But the thing is, these epic adventures, they made more sense back then. Because as teenagers, even college kids, we were playing several times a week. Yeah, okay, if you're literally spending like 20 hours a week playing, you can grind through one of these in something approaching a reasonable amount of time. But do people play like that now? I don't think so. I don't think the average player is 17 the way it was in the 80s. I think these days people discover the hobby in their 20s and we just don't play often enough to get through something like this in less than a year. So what happens? People get lost. I can't tell you how many times my players, me as a player, me as a DM, me as somebody who occasionally watches people playing on Twitch, at least someone once per session says, wait, why are we doing this again? Can someone remind me why we're here and what it is we're trying to do? That is bad. I think folks just take for granted that this is what playing D&D is like. No, it's just playing through a massive adventure. These smaller adventures, not only can you read it in an afternoon, you can basically hold the entire plot in your head. I don't mean like you have the entire thing memorized. I just mean you never lose sight of why anyone is doing anything. It's not long enough to lose sight of that stuff. Okay, so people get lost in the story. That is a big problem. You know what else is a big problem? Never finishing anything. My God, these things take so long to grind through. How many people decide to try D&D? &D? They buy all these books. They do all the work. And for the DM, it is a lot of work. And months later, they're, they're just halfway through this thing and there's no end in sight. And they just get burned out. And they all think, okay, well, that was cool. We did that. Some really cool stuff happened. Let's move on like to a different hobby. They spend the summer playing, they never finished anything, but a lot of cool stuff happened, and eventually they get fed up with never completing anything. They think, I guess we're just not hardcore enough, and they decide the hobby isn't for them. I don't know how many people, but 
I bet at least some have that experience. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yes, the promise of an epic adventure is enticing, I know. But does it actually make sense with how we play? Even Baldur's Gate 3, huge smash hit, game of the year, maybe the best game I've ever played. I often felt lost in the plot. But guess what? Baldur's Gate 3 is a video game. So you don't actually need to pay attention to what's going on. You can just follow the marker on your map and eventually every quest line resolves. You know, or doesn't, and sometimes that's fine. But D&D is a game you play manually. There's no code that runs the game for you. There is no way in D&D for everyone to just follow the little yellow blip and assume everything will work itself out. It takes a DM to make it work by hand. So at least one player at the table, the DM, and I think really all players, can't just sit back and click on all these NPCs, trying to figure out where that fourth talking zombie is, sure in the knowledge he's around here somewhere. Nope, you gotta make it all work. And these big adventures, it's just too much work. Everything I'm saying counts for players as well as DMs. Players get lost, burned out. Players want a sense of finishing something, not just a chapter, a whole adventure, done. That's what small adventures get you. You can finish them. You feel like you did something. And you know what happens when everybody at the table finishes a short, fun adventure? They wanna play again. Small adventures are the opposite of big adventures. You can keep the plot straight. You can finish one in like six weeks. You feel amazing. You wanna do another. You know, when people talk about how frustrating it is that campaigns just fizzle out, I never really understood that, uh, even though every campaign I have run has just fizzled out by any reasonable definition. So what? Well, now I realize what they mean is they never finished one of these. Yeah, of course, that sucks. You got excited to play, you bought one of these. Months later, you're not done, there's no end in sight. And sure, a lot of cool stuff happened, but you never got that final payoff, just a seemingly endless supply of mini bosses. Whereas the campaigns I remember yeah, we got burned out and we wanted to try something else, but that's because we were like 13th level and had played through maybe a dozen different adventures. Not different chapters in one story. No, like a dozen different stories. I talked about this on Twitch and at least one person was like, how does it even make sense? They couldn't figure out how the heroes got from one location to the other. What do you mean? They all happen around here somewhere. That's why your local area, remember that? That's why your local area has a forest over here, some mountains over here, which means some foothills over here, maybe a swamp over here. So that when you buy one of these, you just go, oh, well, it takes place in a swamp, no problem. I got one of those over here. Or you just stick a swamp somewhere nearby. I mean, you guys, I, I had to explain what episodic content is, Jesus. Thanks, Netflix. Thanks, True Detective. There are at least now some people who haven't had the experience of a show being a bunch of unrelated stories. I said, go watch Columbo, it's on YouTube. Kids seem to love it. Each episode is a completely self-contained story, but the hero's always the same. I think a lot of y'all, especially those of you who came up in the hobby with running the game, will be slightly baffled by how passionate I am about this. But I didn't know this is how people played, so I've always talked about seeding my campaigns, specifically a low-level campaign, with a bunch of small adventures. So you already know small adventures are out there and how I use them. It may be, therefore, that this video doesn't get to its intended audience, the folks who think this is normal. But if you know someone like that, please send them this video. That feeling, like you finished something, like, like you accomplished something, you beat the villain, you stopped the nefarious plan, you met some cool NPCs, you explored some cool new places, you got some dope loot, and you got XP. Maybe you leveled up. That feels really good. As soon as you're done, you wanna do it again. That other feeling, like you don't even know why you're doing this anymore, that is a bad feeling. People end up doing a lot, but they do not feel like they accomplished anything it starts to feel disassociative, like your actions have nothing to do with the outcomes. Well, you run short adventures, the opposite happens. I feel like that's the entire video. This should be normal. This should be rare. Well, I can't wave a magic wand and make that happen. When I got started in the hobby, you got all your products at your local game store. Maybe the local bookstore had some of the D&D hardcovers, but otherwise it was the local game store. And back then, game stores had racks or bins filled with adventures like this. I wish I could give you and your friends that experience. You all pile in the car, drive to the local game store, and you sift through all these amazing little episodes of fantasy heroism, looking for the perfect one, the right level, the right environment. And of course, 
There is no such thing as the perfect one, so you just went with the coolest one and you made it work. Each adventure basically got its own marketing campaign. That's what the cover was for and the blurb on the back. That was a very healthy product ecology. We don't have that anymore and I can't bring it back. It is beyond my power. However, we do have this thing. This is the best I can do. This is a website called adventurelookup.com. I do not own or run this. I have no affiliation with it other than it was my idea. Back when this channel was exploding, I said, you know, there are thousands of professionally developed DD adventures out there and there are hundreds of official adventures. And even a really old adventure, if it's good, it's still fun. There should be an easy way to find an adventure that fits your needs. I outlined how such an, a website might work and a bunch of folks went and made it and here it is. You can plug in whatever criteria you want. You want a first level adventure featuring kobolds in a temple? You can do that. You can set tons of criteria, more than you need. I remember thinking it would be cool if you could filter adventures based on what treasure was in there, like which magic items. Well, that requires a lot of volunteers cataloging all that info and it is not all equally useful, but we tried it. Now, I do not run this site. I, I don't have anything to do with it. I remember at one point someone saw how popular it was and they wrote like a, a thousand one page adventures to try to game the system, drive traffic to their content. So there may be a lot of junk in here, but I have used it and it worked for me. It's how I found the adventure we used for our level 21 shot. I get nothing from promoting this other than the hope that some people will realize there is a better way. I love big adventures, Red Hand of Doom, Night Below, but I ran those back when my friends and I played at least once a week and reliably once a week. The hobby has changed, man, and folks need shorter adventures. Believe me. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. That's it. Just a new rant from Uncle Matt. It's been a while since we had a new video, so... Let's have a live stream this Friday, just to hang out here on YouTube at 11 a.m. Pacific time this Friday. Talk about whatever's on your mind. Still got lots of ideas for more videos, folks. So we're just heads down right now on our new RPG. We are building from scratch. You can follow progress of the game on our second channel, link in the doobly-doo. Until next time, folks, peace out.